This is Mon Health Talk, a weekly program focusing on the dedicated physicians, nurses, and staff at Mon Health, the region's premier community hospital system. People with skillful hands and bright minds using state of the art technology. We don't just practice medicine, we care for people like family. That's why at Mon Health you can feel the difference. Once again, welcome to this edition of Mon Health Talk. Good morning. Welcome into the program, Mon Health Talk. I'm Dave Wilson. Today is our final in a series of shows where we've been talking about breast cancer awareness. Of course, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, Mon Health has been working with an initiative this month on breast cancer awareness, detect it, treat it, and today we will talk about defeating it. And joining us on the program this morning, uh, one of our favorite guests, radiation oncologist Dr. James Littles. Dr. Littles, good morning. Thank you so much, Dave. You're one of my favorite guys as well. <laughs> I appreciate that. How you been? It's been a little while since we've chatted. Yes, yes, yes. It it has. Uh, I hear you sometimes on the radio around sporting events, Dave, and, and I believe you do a great job. Well, thank you very much. Uh, just for folks who uh, may be tuning in for the first time, uh, just remind us a little bit about your background. Yeah, Dave, I, uh, uh, as you know, as sure you remember, I grew up in, in, in Florence, South Carolina, and a graduate of Wilson High School. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did my uh, I did my uh, medical school in D.C. at Howard University, and I and I trained um, in Metro Detroit. And after that, I was with uh, the University of Michigan for a decade, and seen and treated uh, several several hundred patients of, of several hundred breast cancer patients uh, through the years, and uh, you know, very comfortable with with questions and and um, uh, in, enjoying what I do every day. All right. Uh, before we get too far into the subject, just so folks know, uh, where where do you physically practice uh, here in town, and how can they get a hold of you? Great. I, I'm I'm at uh, Mon Hospital uh, in in Morgantown, uh, 1200 JD Anderson Drive, and we're in the uh, radiation oncology department in in the uh, the cancer suite. Okay. And as a radiation oncologist, how do you Fit in, or how do you play a role in the treatments and ultimately defeating uh, breast cancer? Great. So usually, you know, the mammograms are first diagnosis, the biopsy, and they're they're seen by a surgeon. Um, in 1985, a, a landmark trial came out to show that uh, patients are not risking their life by saving their breast. So. Uh, my role in radiation. One part of my role in radiation is is after patients decide on and make a, a a great quality of life decision and decide to have a lumpectomy in, in radiation as opposed to a, a mastectomy. The the lumpectomy is done, and I coordinate things and communicate very often with the medical oncologists uh, and the surgeons. Uh, sometimes, uh, depending on what they see when they do the uh, the biopsy. The patients may be an appropriate candidate for what's called neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So, chemotherapy done prior to the lump prior to the lumpectomy. Uh, if uh, neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy is not required, then the lumpectomy is done, and I coordinate everything with the surgeon to make sure that the patient is adequately healed from the lumpectomy, and then I'll uh, see the patient in consultation and, and get the radiation started. That's very important that I don't start the radiation until the surgeon and I are in agreement that the patient is well healed from the lumpectomy. So that minimizes uh, acute side effects of the surgery and, and the radiation. So radiation generally is um, uh, three to four weeks, um, Monday through Friday, for those patients, uh, no Saturday and Sunday, and no holidays. Um, uh, during that time, uh, we monitor patients for side effects, and then there's another group of patients that have uh, locally advanced uh, breast cancer, and they're usually treated with uh, aggressive systemic therapy. And then they may not be a candidate for breast conserving therapy, and they may be treated at that time with a mastectomy. And the radiation's role is to treat the chest wall and regional lymph nodes to keep the cancer from, from coming back locally. We're talking to Dr. James Littles this morning, a radiation oncologist, and we'll get into questions about side effects and some of the common questions you get from patients in just a moment. But uh, 
broadly speaking, what what is the objective? What is the goal of radiation therapy? Right. So the goal of radiation is to keep the cancer from coming back. So the lumpectomy removes all the gross disease, uh, and the mastectomy removes all gross disease. Uh, but those patients are at mild to moderate risk of the cancer coming back in the breast or the cancer coming back locally or regionally. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, Dave, sometimes patients develop uh, uh, lesions from their breast cancer in other parts of the body, and they've had excellent response to chemotherapy, and there's only one small uh, area that needs to be treated, and that could be in the liver, in the lung, in um, a lymph node, uh, in the stomach, and or, uh, or in a bone. And then the radiation is given at an extremely high dose, very meticulously, stereotactically, and usually does a great job in controlling that local area. Um, and sometimes the cancers, uh, unfortunately, do come back locally, and the radiation and those local recurrences are unresectable. The radiation is used uh, at that time. So as we talked about before, radiation uh, is, in essence, a high-tech target practice, aim and fire. I know you like that metaphor, and that's what I use all the time. And, yeah, I do like that metaphor. And, and how much more precise can you be with uh, aiming and firing than maybe you could have you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago with radiation therapy? Oh, Dave, it is absolutely amazing. And, and when you think about technology of cell phones, when you think about computer technology, when you think about imaging technology with CAT scans and MRIs, you know, radiation is a very, very technical um, form of treatment. And you think about how innovative uh, automobile technology is and airplane, te airplane technology over the past 10 to 20 to 30 years. So radiation in the field of medicine has evolved very much analogous to, to, to those things. You know, when you, when you think about the fact that you can uh, visit a friend of yours in San Francisco and, and drive all the way back to Morgantown and never really speak to them and go in and, and eat their food, you, and it's, that's something you couldn't have dreamed of 30 years ago, and now that you can you can easily do that via text messages and, and, and remote things. Talking to Dr. James Littles this morning, radiation oncologist. Uh, before we take the break, can you, for a patient who has uh, gone through uh, gone through the mammogram, had the biopsy, um, has had the surgery, now they're at the point where they are ready for radiation therapy. They're coming to see you for the first time. What can they expect? Number one, uh, uh, they can expect someone very caring and very competent, and they can also expect uh, someone who will listen to, ask, uh, to answer questions, and they can expect we will, uh, that I will minimize confusion about the technical aspects of radiation, what the plan is, what the side effects are. I, I spend a lot of time with my initial consults, and, and, that's, and that's a part of that because there are a lot of myths about the field of radiation, and so I have to dispel myths, I have to explain the, the program, and I have to comprehensively talk about the techniques that we use and, and uh, uh, what they need to expect. So I take a long time with my initial consults. We're talking to Dr. Uh, James Littles, radiation oncologist, and I want to talk him and ask him about some of the myths, common questions, uh, side effects that come along with radiation therapy. We're talking about uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, detect it, treat it. Today we're talking about Defeating it with Dr. James Littles. We'll continue that conversation right after this. This is Mon Health Talk on WAJR. Now back to Mon Health Talk, a discussion of the issues, people, and procedures in healthcare today. If you have a question for one of our healthcare guests, call now at 304 296 0041. Dr. James Littles is our guest this morning, radiation oncologist. We've been talking about breast cancer awareness this month. Detect it, treat it, and defeat it. We're on to the uh, defeat it portion of that conversation. And uh, Dr. Littles, when you're talking to a patient, maybe the first time or you're going through the radiation uh, therapy treatments, uh, what are some of the common myths you have to dispel? And what are some of, the, some of the common questions patients usually have for you? Oh, for sure, uh, Dave. By far, the most common question, especially with the lady that that do not need uh, systemic chemotherapy, by far the most common question is when I treat their breasts, will they lose their hair? I mean, I think that is at least three-fourths of the, of the patients that I see ask that question, three-fourths at least, maybe even higher. Mm -hmm. 
and that's throughout all the throughout the years. So when I when I say uh, high tech target practice aim and fire, um, that denotes that if the hair on your head is outside of the target, your hair is protected. Your eyes are outside of the target. Your ears, your lips, your bowel, your rectum, a lot of those, your liver, your kidney, your spinal cord, all of those things are out of the target, and they are very well protected. Let me just jump in. That, like we talked about uh, just in the last segment, what, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that maybe wasn't the case? Well, uh, it, it was... It was it was the case then, but the technology has, has allowed us to to protect even the closer organs oh. with a lot more uh, sophistication, uh, the heart and the lung. Uh, when I first uh, uh, came to to Mon over four years ago, I asked for something. Uh, 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 I asked for something Dave called ClearCheck. So ClearCheck allows me to crystallize protecting the heart and protecting the lung. Um, and, you know, we had, we did, you know, I, I had ClearTech where I was before, but ClearTech is probably about 10, 15, 10 years old. And before ClearTech, we had to use uh, something called uh, curves and look at the areas under the curve. Now we just electronically plug in the ClearTech. The ClearTech is, like it says, very clear and very fast and very concise. And, again, it simplifies uh, organ protection. So we could protect the organs before, but we can do it a lot faster now, a lot clearer, and more more, uh, more comprehensive. Okay. What are some of the other questions uh, patients usually have for you? Well, they're, 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 they'll talk about the uh, skin reaction. They'll talk about radiation fatigue. They'll talk about, you know, can you protect my heart? They'll talk about uh, uh, how long does the treatment last? How long does the setup last? Um uh, do I glow in the dark? Can I be around family members? Um, there are a those, lot. Those are the main questions they ask. Yes. The, well, what I was going to drive at there, there's just so many unknowns. We we probably all have in our head an idea, and that's probably from television and movies and, and in different media where we we've seen of what this treatment and what the therapy is going to be like, but. I'm going to guess that's probably just an idea that, again, we've we've gotten from TV and, and movies, and that doesn't necessarily meet reality when we sit down and talk to you. And, uh, uh, Dave, one of the other things that, that women commonly tell me, and, and I'm actually literally quoting them right now, women will commonly tell me that, that, tell me that radiation is a piece of cake compared to chemotherapy. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that they will tell me that radiation is a piece of cake compared to chemotherapy. So we're talking to Dr. James Littles this morning, radiation oncologist. For the patient that defeats the cancer, that, that gets to ring the bell at the, you know, they've finished their treatments, they ring the bell, what's the next step in the journey? Because it doesn't end with the, the end of chemotherapy or the end of radiation therapy, does it? Oh, uh, absolutely not. Uh, um, and that's, you know, that's one of the advantages of, of, of being here at Mon. We have a very a uh, small group of, of, uh, of cancer physicians. We we talk to each other all the time. My office is as a as a thirty second walk from the office of doctors uh, Causey and Chima. We talk with the breast surgeons all the time. We have each other's cell phone. Uh, it's it's a real small uh, close knit family. So we follow these patients uh, several times a year. Um, you know I follow the patients for for five years. The medical oncologist follows them for. Or several years, and, and and so do the breast surgeons. How much? I don't know. Fun is the right word to say, but how fun is it that maybe I don't know, year, two years, you're walking down the street one day, you bump into somebody, a patient, and they say, "Hey, Doctor Littles, you know, two years cancer free. Hey, Doctor Littles, five years cancer free. High five. I don't know if they ask you for a high five or something, but but how? I I would imagine that's gratifying and great to see, isn't it? Well, I, well. For, for me, Dave, I, uh, uh, it's it's a ple- it's a pleasure and an honor, and I, I thank God for everything. It's just I I just enjoy uh, the privilege of, of of serving these cancer patients uh, because medicine has changed uh, uh, so rapidly over the past 20 to 30 years, and not only in breast cancer but in lung cancer, head and neck cancer. There are a number of of survivors. Now out two to three to five to seven to eight years, and 
and uh, it, it is just an honor for me to, to to see this and to be in to be involved in this. And and certainly, um, uh, you know, I play a small role, but I'm thankful for the small role that I play. And and and, and again, I I enjoy what I do every day. And 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 you 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 said it right. Sometimes a lot of times I get hugs in the street, and and it's just uh, it's just an honor for me to to be a part of that. I, I just can't I guess just can't say enough about it. I can't say enough about it. And, and maybe you can speak a little bit more to this. You you play a role, and and what I want patients to and, and anybody who's listening today to realize it's not just one doctor, or one physician. That when it comes to cancer treatment at Mon Health, it's a team approach. That there are several people who are going to be working in conjunction, in coordination, to come up with the best treatment plan and then execute that plan. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. And, and like I said, I'll, I'll, uh, my my office with Dr. Steeman and, and Kazi, our, our 30 minutes walks from each other, and we talk to each other pretty much every day, sometimes several times a day. Uh, I, I love communicating with them, and um, um, you know, we're, we 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 work to, to to stay on the same page because it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship that the patients win. So when we have a symbiotic relationship, the patient wins. And Dr. Littles, before we go, it is, again, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and one of the reasons that um, breast cancer um, has become, the survival rates have gone up, has been early detection. So just remind women about the importance of uh, getting that mammogram and the 3D mammograms that are available. Oh, there's no doubt about it. So um, thank you, Dave. The United States Preventive Services Task Force came out in May of this year recommending mammograms begin at age 40. The United States Preventive Services Task Force in May of this year recommended that mammograms begin at age 40. The American College of Breast Surgeons uh, recommends mammograms at age 45 to be every year until you have a less than 10-year life expectancy. So if you are a very, very healthy 80-year-old, they would recommend that you get your mammogram. Uh, Starting from 40 to 80, um, and uh, uh, the other thing I want to remind you, we talked about it last year, uh, Dave, is that from 1989 to the year 2020, there has been a 43% decline in the breast cancer death rates. That's accounting, that's account, that accounts for over 450,000 breast cancer lives saved, 450,000 breast cancer lives saved, and that is from mammograms, 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 and effective treatment. So with mammograms, mammograms, and mammograms, an effective treatment has accounted, has accounted for an extra 450,000 breast cancer lives being saved since 1989. Wow. Get your mammogram. Is that, That's the short of it. Go get your mammogram each year. Hey, Dr. Littles, we are uh, out of time this morning. Always good to talk to you. And, of course, uh, again, you can get uh, more information. Go to monhealth.com slash mammogram or monhealth.com slash cancer. Dr. Little, it's always a good time talking to you. appreciate it. And uh, you're welcome to come back in studio one day. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of yours, Dave. No <laughs> doubt about it. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. James Little's radiation oncologist, our guest this morning.